ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local women, local men. Member FDIC. It is Thursday, March 4th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw hard seltzer made pure. Coming up today on the program, we're going to hear from the voice of the Charlotte 49ers, Matt Swearad. He joins me in about 10 minutes. Looking forward to talking to him as Marshall and Charlotte. Coming up tomorrow and Saturday, we will have all of that action for you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Also over on our sister station, 93.7 The Dog. This is going to be a fun one. Marshall and Charlotte meeting for the 19th time. Marshall has had a little bit better go of it in the series. It's not by much 11-7, but still, you know, you always like to lead the series. So we'll hear more about this Charlotte squad coming up. And as I mentioned, we'll get your phone calls in at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Looking at Charlotte, it's a talented team. They've got a six-game losing streak. And they have been swept in their last three conference series by Middle Tennessee, UTEP, Old Dominion. I mean, they're a good team, but there are some deficiencies right now. They're fourth in Conference USA in points given up per game at 65.7. They're last in points per game at 63.3. But Jameer Young, fourth in the conference in scoring, 18.4 points a contest. And he's also won the Conference USA Player of the Week award a couple of times. So they've got some talent on the team just trying to put it all together. And Marshall trying to keep what momentum they have, finding out that they can come back after getting punched in the mouth by a team and respond. And will they be able to continue that? That was something I talked to Tavio and Kenzie yesterday. Kind of got a chuckle, a chuckle out of that, I think. When I said, look, is the Friday team showing up or is the Saturday team showing up? And... The energy should be there. They know what they're trying to do. They know what you're trying to accomplish. If you can win these last two games and some things fall in place, but you could be a two seed. You could be a three seed. You want to be that two seed, though. You don't want to play on that second day. You want to play on the Thursday, play Thursday, Friday if you win on Thursday, and, of course, hopefully get yourself into the championship game. On the other hand, if you play as a three seed or more, you're going to play at least a little earlier play on Wednesday, if you tumble and you fall all the way to the 6 or 7 seed, and no chance really there. I don't see that happening. As I said, some strange things would have to happen. I don't know what the exact math would be, but uh, it would be a total collapse if it did happen. But Marshall pretty much going to be playing on Wednesday, at least. That's the worst case probably right now for the Thundering Herd, playing on Wednesday. And then if they can get things to go their way, maybe they start on Thursday playing as a number two seed. If they play on the number two seed slot, that means they're going to avoid Western Kentucky until possibly the finals. Because right now, Western Kentucky is pretty much the top team in Conference USA. I think that's fair to say. You know, there might be some debate here, but I think the East Division is a little stronger. I think Western Kentucky is a little stronger. I'm not even using the net. I'm not even talking about the net rankings. Just looking at what I've seen and what... Western Kentucky has been able to do. And, of course, the net doesn't mean anything when it comes to matchups. And so I think Western Kentucky is probably the team that Marshall would like to face in the finals. And, of course, if Marshall can get to the finals, maybe I feel a little bit better about Marshall's chances. If they're in the finals, maybe if they win that game, they get to go to the NCAA tournament, maybe not. Not necessarily guaranteed, but maybe they get some consideration for one of those limited NIT bids. Only going to be 16 of those handed out. They're all going to be at-large bids. There's no guaranteed bid this year as far as when your conference regular season and you get to go to the NIT worst-case scenario if you don't get into the NCAA tournament. But I kind of feel a little bit better about that maybe. But there's still some good teams in Conference USA. So Marshall's going to have to go in this weekend, get Charlotte, get them twice, get ready for the conference. Maybe worst case is third, second, third. That's kind of where I'm looking at. And we won't know any of this until these games are played. So that's where we're at with Marshall and Charlotte. And of course, the women in action 
on the road tonight taking on Middle Tennessee. It's going to be a little later, so we're not going to actually have any updates uh, for you today. Tomorrow we'll talk about that game and look ahead because uh, they're playing a little earlier, moved up, because they've been on the road last weekend and this weekend, and then they'll come back to Huntington, make the trip to Frisco. I believe they're leaving on Monday. They're not going to go any earlier, so they'll come back to Huntington and get settled in and get ready for their trip. I believe that's the same for Marshall, going to be leaving on a Monday. That looks like that's the plan right now. So Thundering Herd trying to get to Frisco as best it can and get acclimated to the floor. For the veterans, they know what to do. They know what to deal with there. You get to that facility and you're new to it. You try to get your depth perception and a few other things. I mean, it's different. It's different playing in a facility that was designed for football, not basketball. I just hope Conference USA, as much as I appreciate them trying to go out of the box a little bit, and I understand, you you want to do some things different, but I would hope Conference USA eventually would come to some consensus on where you can host this tournament every year that is a little bit more equitable to all the teams in Conference USA. I mean, if you're a team in Texas, yeah, this is not a big deal. Hey, you get to play in Texas. And they're opening up, as well, limited fans. The the league made that known today. So there's going to be some limited fans at the star. Honestly, and I'm not trying to take shots at the conference, but there were limited fans there when they were allowed full capacity. I mean, it wasn't as if this was a huge draw. And it's hard to be a huge draw if you are looking at what the logistics are of this thing. Now, this year, every team gets to go. So it's not that hard to make that decision. Am I going to Frisco for a few days? Go watch the herd. And the answer might be, if you're a basketball fan, you're probably already making that decision. If you're a hardcore fan, you're one of the the devout. You're one of the ones that travel. You are pretty much decided, yeah, I'm going. Now, um, limited capacity. And there's going to be limited general admission, according to the league. Here's what it, it breaks down to. You're going to have tickets, not going to be general public. Uh, Instead, member institutions will receive an allotment for player, guest, and sale through campus ticket offices. All tickets will be general admission, and seating will be located in Ford Center's permanent bowl section on the west side of the arena. Limited general admission will also include tickets available through promotional opportunities. All frontline workers and first responders can request free tickets with proof of employment. And there's a link on the website at conferenceusa.com. You can apply if you're interested in that. And so you're looking at a limited entrance, not many fans, got to wear masks, all of that. So if you're one of the lucky that can get a hold of a ticket or you're able to go, you know, would you go? Would you go to this? And again, if you're a diehard herd fan, you're probably saying, "Oh yeah." If you are a fan of means and you have some, you know, way to go, you're going to do this. So, opening things up a little bit, uh, more details on Conference USA's website. When we continue, we're going to talk to the voice of the Charlotte 49ers, Matt Swearad. He joins me next here on ESPN 94.1 in AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Thursday, March 4th edition. Your drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have basketball action between Marshall and Charlotte. Final home series regular season for the Thundering Herd. This is a makeup from a couple of weeks ago. So looking forward to seeing Charlotte into Huntington. And to tell us more about the 49ers, we want to welcome to the program now the voice of of the Charlotte 49ers, Matt Swearad. Matt, glad you're coming in tomorrow. Uh, I never thought we'd get this series played, so thankfully we're getting a make-up here. Yeah, it's nice that we get to uh, to finish it out before the conference tournament. In fact, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm not that far away. I'm just outside of Charleston right now, so 
it's been a nice ride up and uh, looking forward to playing a couple of games over the weekend. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of those series that I know Tavion Kenzie has circled. Uh, he's sort of reminding me of Michael Jordan these days from The Last Dance where he's just finding anything and everything to get himself psyched up and mad because you know, last time out, of course, Charlotte a little bit more uh, fortunate than the Thundering Herd. Tavion remembering that, and this is a team that really could use a win. And for Marshall, they're just trying to maintain momentum. So where do you see this going, especially with the last few weeks, Charlotte's just not been able to to, to buy a, a win. Yeah, you know, this team's really struggling. So it's, it's funny because going into this weekend, if the Niners were to win tomorrow night, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised because they've got the talent to do it. But on the, on the you know, same side here if they would have lost or they lose by 25 I wouldn't be surprised either because lately we just don't know which team's going to show up and um, you know there's been a lot of reasons and right now our, our starting center Milo Shapita is out with a with an ankle injury and that was really evident in terms of the loss last weekend at UTEP the inside game of the minors just destroyed Charlotte um, and there's some size you know there's some size with the herd so who knows what's going to happen tomorrow night. But that being said, there's enough talent on this team for the Niners to, to win and get something going before the conference tournament. But uh, I'm not sure you know, if they can, they can turn it around right now. They're, they're struggling. Matt Swear at joining us uh, on the way to Huntington as he speaks. The Thundering Herd in Charlotte tomorrow at the Cam Henderson Center. And you look at this team – Early on, none of these problems, and you're thinking, okay, this is going to be one of the better teams. Do you feel just the top the turvy schedule this year, the way that everything has panned out, has major made been a major con- contribution to the way all these teams are playing? Because you know, I was expecting Charlotte to come in here, probably you know, battling for one of the top spots in Conference USA. Yeah, you know, last year this time uh, they were a top four seed going to the conference tournament and uh, really felt like there would be a team that would be in that same position here this year. But two things that are really evident with this Niners team. Um, first, the loss of Cooper Robb and Malik Martin from last year's team, plus the two graduate seniors in Drew Edwards and Amadou Baba. Uh, the two underclassmen that transferred out, just really tough players, hard-nosed, scrappy guys. And that's one thing we're missing from this team this year. And the second thing is just because of the coronavirus and the way they had you know, preseason camp and so many new faces on this team, they haven't really been able to bond like you normally would and spend time together. And that really has also uh, you know, kind of played a big part in their up and down, you know, kind of don't know uh, what's going to happen by each night kind of performance. They, you know, they've been good enough to certainly – beat Western Kentucky and probably should have won both those games. They beat UAB. They beat a good Davidson team. Um, but then again, you know, they've struggled at home and to close out games. And I, and I think if there have been a crowd uh, at Halton, we've not had fans this year. I'm not sure the, the situation in the Henderson Center, but we've not had fans. And it's been really, really a, a big reason why I think we've not closed out games down the stretch in the last three or four minutes of our home losses. They probably should have won five or six of those games. So, uh, so close to being a team that, that has, you know, 15, 16 wins, but not surprising they're sitting where they are because of the youth, the defections of last year, and uh, what they've had to deal with on a daily basis. There will be fans at the Henderson Center tomorrow. It's limited seating capacity, but still there will be some fans there. And uh, that was something that Marshall – had missed for a while. For one point, Marshall had only played one series in conference and Western Kentucky is a travel partner. And the fans, you, you're right, when you have them there, whatever number of fans are there, that definitely helps. And I can see where that would hurt Charlotte as well because you know, Charlotte's got a great fan base and a great arena to play in. Yeah, it, it gets loud. And just like the Henderson Center, it gets loud and and last year's Niners team, I think they won 13, 14 games at home. It was a, a big um, home court boost for them, and they've not had that this year. And, and uh, you know, so many teams have excuses, and you still have to play the game, and it's the same way for the team you're playing. They're playing in front of no fans, but um, it, it's a young team. And, and, you know, players these days, they're they're used to their surroundings and their friends and uh, 
and you know, no students on campus. It's very minimal right now with the Niners, a lot of online classes. And uh, we've seen that really play a toll on this team. And whether or not a normal year would have made a difference, I think it would have, but uh, it seems like it, it has affected this team. It seems like from a distance that – Charlotte's pretty good defensively. I mean, right now, fourth in Conference USA, 65.7, a contest there. Offensively, Jameer Young and trying to find everybody else to get the ball. Is that what it, it looks like right now? It's just tr- trying to find somebody that can score alongside of Young? Yeah, a little bit. Um, they've had, like last weekend, they had some really good looks and just didn't knock shots down. Um you know, they've gone stretches, you know, four, five, six minutes uh, where they don't score and, and their defense has really had to pick them up. And lately, um, you know, they'll play defense really well for 20 to 24 seconds, then kind of let down in the last couple of seconds of the shot clock and, you know, give up a layup or give up a, an open 10, 12 footer. So um, as good as the defense has been at times, it, it hasn't been consistent enough with the offense struggling and, um, you know, Jameer Young is, is a very talented young man, and he's going to be a really good player before his, his career is over. And he's a good player now, but he's just learning to be the guy on a team. Where he was in high, high school at DeMatha, he, he was not a starter. He wasn't one of the stars. It was a very good team, and he deferred to other people. And even with his AAU team, he wasn't one of the stars. He came off the bench and um, didn't have to be that guy that's carrying the team on his shoulders. I think he's kind of bearing some of the weight of that right now where it's something new for him. He's still learning his way through. And uh, in the last few games with teams kind of keen on him and others not able to help him pick up the slack, it certainly has, has hurt his play. Matt Swearad joins us on the program, voice of the 49ers, uh, making his way to Huntington as Marshall taking on Charlotte tomorrow and on Saturday at the Cam Henderson Center before we head to the Conference USA Tournament. And the conference tournament this year changing again. It's probably a blessing to every team in Conference USA below a certain record level because everybody gets in. You know, looking at this tournament now, how are you looking at it? How are you liking it? Or you know, we don't even know yet until Saturday where everyone's going to be. At least the only thing I do know is six and sevens are going to be playing on Tuesday. So there is some guidance there. Yeah, you know, I- I'm one of those folks that's for everybody going. I'm glad they made that change, whatever reason it was. It seems like it's just, you know, even if you're struggling, it's it's just a way to cap off the season and, and, and get a chance to go out there and compete with everybody and, and take a chance at, you know, finishing up your year on a, on a higher note. Um, how it's going to play out, there's so many teams in this league that, that can get hot for three, four days and certainly win the championship. Um you know, Western's really good, and we haven't played La Tech. I haven't seen them, but, boy, they, they sure look like they're having a good year. Uh, North Texas the same, and uh, it's probably wide open. You know, it's probably going to be wide open, and I wouldn't put it past the 49ers or Marshall making a run. Um, I know for the Niners, they got to get healthy, and I'm hoping we get Jackson Threadgill, who's a freshman that we haven't had for a while, uh, back in the lineup. I'm not sure if we'll get Milos back before the conference tournament, but that would be a big boost if we did. Uh, but I think it's wide open. There's probably six, seven teams that really have a legitimate shot uh, to walk out of there with the championship. Now, I'm of a mixed mindset here. On one hand, I want to see maybe half the teams get to go. You take the very best. At the other hand, this is probably the most fair thing you can do because not every school has a a similar body of work or the opportunity to put forth a body of work. Yeah. Some schools have missed a lot of games and yeah, having games postponed, rescheduled. This is really not a true way to indicate, you know, which teams deserve to get into the tournament this year, because Charlotte's journey is different from Marshall's journey, which is different from Western's journey, which is different from North Texas's journey and, and so on and so on. Yeah. You know, you're right. It's an unbalanced schedule. Um, some teams are playing a harder schedule than others, and uh, you're right. It's not it's not easy to evaluate everybody. It wouldn't be fair if if you left out a team that had four or five wins, and and you know another team that maybe has more but had an easier schedule. Uh, when you play your your normal conference schedule, it's more balanced, and uh, you can really 
have a better idea as to who your top teams are going into the conference tournament. But when you have a league as, as big as Conference USA, you know, the ACC is as big and others, everybody goes. It seems like some of these leagues that at times can be one bid leagues that for whatever reason, maybe it's financially, they don't bring everybody. So, you know, if it's okay to bring everybody in the Big East and everyone in the SEC and everybody in the ACC, why is it not okay to bring everybody every year in Conference USA? Might actually generate some interest in the tournament because this is a hard sell. I mean, how many Charlotte fans are going to make the trip to go see Charlotte play in Frisco? And the same thing for almost every East Division team. Uh, and tickets are going to be very limited to begin with, but this is actually probably going to generate more interest for this tournament, Charlotte fans included. They know they're part of the dance this year. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure if anybody's going to travel because of what's going on with, with COVID and, and now, with, especially with Texas, kind of opening things back up again. Some people may have some hesitation to to leave, but it, it does, you know, give more interest in terms of having everybody out there and giving everybody a shot. And we haven't played in the conference tournament in a while. Again, last year we were supposed to be the fourth seed, so we had to buy in the first round and uh, didn't get to play our first game because of the uh, the cancellation of the tournament the morning of our, our first game. So the two previous years, we didn't qualify for the conference tournament. And uh, you know, it, it's it's been forever since we've uh, had a chance to play in the Conference USA tournament. So I know we're looking forward uh, to the trip, and hopefully our fans are as well. Mess, whereas joining me, the voice of the Charlotte 49ers, how difficult is it right now? Charlotte, in my mind, that's a basketball school. Things are going well now. Things are turning around. You know, In a few more years, you might think, okay, Charlotte's a football school. But always in my mind, Charlotte's a basketball school. And so when... You know, I look at Charlotte having struggles. I, I scratch my head sometimes, and I'm sure it's the same for the fans. Yeah, you know, it, it is. The hardcore fans that have been around for a while, and um, we had a really great run for a while. But it's been since 2005 since uh, Charlotte's been in the NCAA tournament. I believe in this coaching staff. I like Ron Sanchez and you know, what they're trying to do, and I, I think he's the right guy. But it's been a while since this team has been able to – participate in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, back in the late 90s to the middle of 2000, um, it uh, it wasn't, you know, are we going, it's where are we going when you get to Selection Sunday. And uh, I know I missed that and the excitement of the NCAA tournament. And you're right, Charlotte does have a great history in basketball going back to the Final Four in 1977. But now it's football, it's a little bit different. And, you know, we came back to Conference USA because, you know, they gave us an invitation, and it was a home for our football program. I uh, left the Atlantic 10, which has been a multiple bid league. And, uh, and before that, Conference USA 1.0 was, was that tremendous league with, of course, Louisville and Marquette and St. Louis and uh, Cincinnati. And it was just a, a basketball powerhouse with Memphis and so many great teams. That was a different time. Um, Hopefully, this league can continue to grow and, 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 and get back into a multiple bid basketball situation. I thought at one point it might be this year with Western, maybe UAB. Um, if Western wins out and gets the conference finals and uh, it loses in the finals, it could still be a two bid league. But, um, I, you know, for the Niners, it has been a basketball school history wise, and uh, hopefully, uh, get it going again but you know football's been exciting for a lot of the folks and um hopefully you know next season we get a normal year back and it'll be year number three for will healy we'll see what they can do and uh, we didn't get to make our trip up to marshall this year that was uh, right at the end of the year and it got canceled so hopefully we get to put a hurt again next year it's a nice little rivalry that, that we've got going and it's one of the closest schools of course to the charlotte campus in conference usa so easy for the fans to go back and forth and hopefully that that gets going again full full schedule full steam ahead next year mess we're as joining me he's the voice of the charlotte 49ers and i'm glad you brought that up with the proximity because i was going to ask you the east and west this year i like it i like playing east west i'm a fan of it it makes sense for this league especially how spread out this league is you know, how have you taken to it, or how has Charlotte taken to it this year as far as the East-West win you can play? I like it. I, I kind of wish they went a little bit more heavy with, you know, games within your own side of the division. Um, you know, 
with the travel and all, I would have liked to have played Western twice, Marshall twice, Old Dominion twice, which we did play Old Dominion the two times. But I mean, just to to go home and home and not do the two games on Friday, Saturday kind of situation, then sprinkle a few games against others in, um, I, I would have enjoyed that a little bit more. But uh, I, I like the breakdown that way. And going forward, I'd, I'd rather be more heavy on, on your teams and, uh, and try to get more of the, the rivalry going. The league is so spread out, and I'm not sure our fans you know, really care about the teams in Texas or uh, down in Louisiana. Uh, I'd rather play the teams that are closer more times. I agree with you 100%. I, I would like maybe seeing Wednesday, Saturday. You know, maybe Western Marshall make that road swing and then, you know, they'll play host to the other teams that are coming in this year. It, it would have been probably more entertaining. And at the same time, the only fallacy I found with this is when a team got hit, that's two games, not, you know, yeah. okay, Western lost a game, Marshall lost a game. Marshall lost two games. Or Western would lose two games, not just one. So I would hope if we go to this format, and hopefully we don't have these worries next season, but still, I like the format. Just I think there should have been spread out a little bit better or at least made it so if a team got hit with COVID or whatever issue, travel is a factor as well. You lose one game. One school loses one game. And you still get that home and home feel, you know, on the road, on at home. It's in the it's a move in the right direction and definitely beats the pod play. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the pod play at all. Uh, when we were in the Atlantic 10, we, we played Wednesday, Saturday, and you didn't have to be on the road for both days. And a little bit easier cities to fly in and out of. But again, our league is so spread out. I, I know they probably do it to save money and uh, keep costs down with, with travel, but um, it makes for a long road trip. You know, it, it, at least we're, we're home one week, gone one week, but you know that week you're gone. And we're very fortunate. We, we charter most places, but uh, we'll leave on on uh, you know Wednesday normally to play on Thursday. And then we fly after the game to the next city, and you're there Friday, play again Saturday, fly home. So essentially, you're, you're gone Wednesday through sometimes Sunday morning by the time you get back to your house. That's a long week every other week, uh, the way it's set up right now. Matt Swearad joining me. Hey, Matt, safe travels. Uh, I know you're almost here. Uh, looking forward to this one tomorrow, and uh, thanks for doing it. We'll do this again real soon. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Take care. That's Matt Swearad. He's got the call of the Charlotte side of this game coming up tomorrow. And, of course, we have Steve Cotton and all the play-by-play action right here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930. Paul Swan with you. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back, Paul Swan, your host for The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our phone lines are yours at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. That's the number to be a part of the White Claw phone line. White Claw, hard seltzer. It's made pure. Thundering Herd in action tonight on the women's side. The women taking on Middle Tennessee. That action begins uh, here shortly. You can, of course, uh, check out all the action. going to be over on the student station, I do believe, on 88.1. WMUL. Uh, Seven o'clock is going to be tip time. And of course, the links are over at herdzone.com. And as I said, you can, of course, do the old fashioned way. You can just turn your radio on uh, over at the student radio station. Jason Courier is going to be uh, calling the game. Marshall's basketball SID for the women. And of course, the overall czar of the SID Corps. You know, try to get him on today. Uh, Try to get him on just like right before the game to see if he would give me a quick preview. And um, I don't know. I'm going to have to talk with him. I'm going to have words with him and see where he, you know, where we fail to to communicate that, you know, it will be a good idea for him to come on and talk about that. But uh, we'll be listening tonight, uh, tuning that in. Of course, uh, we'll have reaction from Coach Kemper tomorrow as we get set for the men taking on Charlotte. But again, that is coming up tonight. 
That is Marshall and Middle Tennessee. And then tomorrow, same time, 7 o'clock. So the women going to be in action tonight and tomorrow. The men start tomorrow. Friday is a busy day. If you're a Herd football fan and you don't know what to do in those off months, well, tomorrow is your day. I mean, seriously, you're a Herd fan and you just don't know what to do the rest of the week. If you're a football fan, you're like, okay, I can't wait till football season. And just, you know, and football, football. It's because it's the only thing going on, really, for the most part. Tomorrow, try out a new sport because there are several of them for you to choose from. And we've got the men's golf. The golf team is at the Sea Palms Invitational tomorrow. Now, you can't necessarily watch that, but you can, you, you can, you can read about it. Uh, softball is uh, taking on Valparaiso and Bowling Green at 1130 in the morning. So you know, we might have actually be able to get some reaction from that this time uh, because it's earlier than it was yesterday. So we'll uh, have some opportunity there to hear from Megan Smith-Lyon. And then baseball is in action at 1 p.m., taking on Moorhead State. So you get an opportunity. You could go see uh, some softball. I know there's a limited seating there. Uh, you can see a little bit of baseball. I believe there's limited seating there. And you have also the women's game. You have soccer. Soccer is um, coming up at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And um, don't forget tennis. Don't forget tennis. Tennis is a thing you should be following. And just so you know, here's um, here's a text from John Mercer. Look, the coaches listen to this show. When they're not doing practice or whatever, coaches listen. Uh, here's uh, here's the ITA. John's reminding me. The ITA has decided to have weekly regional rankings. The Atlantic Regional Committee is tasked with voting each week to determine the top 10 for the region. And um, here are the Atlantic Regional rankings for week ending 228. UVA's 1, Old Dominion's 2, Marshall's 3. And I'll stop there. West Virginia's 9. I'll, Virginia Tech's 8, West Virginia's 9. I'll mention those two. And... That's pretty good. So tennis is doing its thing right now. So don't forget tennis. So, uh, again, John Mercer keeping me on the straight and narrow. We will uh, come back and wrap it up here on ESPN 94.1 at AM 930. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on the drive. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're wrapping up today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. John Mercer, tennis coach, Thundering Herd, just pointed out to me, hey, don't forget Saturday, Herd's taking on VCU. So high noon, it's Marshall Tennis taking on VCU. The matchup with Radford had to be uh, canceled. So Thundering Herd hasn't been in action since February 19th. And we'll hear from, hopefully, Coach Mercer tomorrow. That's coming up on the Friday edition of the show. Plus, we've got Marshall basketball action tomorrow as well, as Marshall taking on Charlotte. All of that beginning right here, 5.06 p.m. on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I told you, coaches listen. If they're not running practice, coaches are listening. You remember that time I, I jokingly said, look, I don't want to hear 20-some minutes of Tony Kemper because I'm going to have him tomorrow. Uh, Tony just neglected to hear the part that said I'm going to have him on the show and just isolated the part in his head that said, oh, okay, you don't want to hear 20-some minutes of me. He never let me live that down. He never let me live that down. Um, I like I like these coaches. I'm, I'm telling you right now, uh, this is – I think this is the – now, you want them to win, and you want to support them to win, but I think this is also the most fun group of coaches in a long while. I mean, it really is because yeah, John Mercer's fun. Ari Agnes is fun. Megan Smith-Lyon's fun. Tony Kemper's fun. Dan D'Antoni's fun. Uh, Coach uh, Huff is um, on Red Bull all day long. Wags is fun. Coach Wags is fun. Michael Swan seems fun, head coach of the women's team. Uh, coach Grossi's fun. He, yeah, he he seems fun. I mean, they're all just they just seem fun right now. Did I miss anyone? Um, that's your cue, Nick. 
Did I miss anyone? I, th- I think you got them all. You think I got them all? Okay. Uh, well, besides the golf coaches. Do you think Grobe is fun? He's a really nice guy. Oh, I'll wait, I know he's know. a nice guy. You think Matt Grobe is fun? Yeah, we'll classify him as fun. Okay. We need to get him on, by the way. I'll work on that. Okay. Good job. Intern, Nick Verzellini. He's going to work on that. Um, how's Jeff Probst coming? He hasn't replied to me yet. Just Instagram, huh? Right. Okay, the joke Probably here— not the best way to go about it. Yeah, the joke here is uh, that uh, David Kahn— I don't know why I do things for David Kahn uh, from the West Virginia Power. Um, he runs— do, do you think this joke should die about his fantasy survivor league that he conducts and he wants Jeff Probst on the show so he can be a part of it? Does, should we just kill that joke right now? I mean, maybe. Okay. Maybe give it like another week. Give it another week. We'll, we'll run it. Yeah, we'll run it into the ground completely. Left in it. Okay. All right, Nick Verzellini. Um, I'm going to have to adjust my headphones. So actually, Because I'm not used to actually the person on the other side of the glass talking. I'm going to have to adjust my headphones so I can hear you better. There's a reason for that, Nick. There was a reason for that. Uh, we, have some, we have since come past that reason. And we will – because – Luke Creasy was on the, you know, when he was interning, always contributed. Good guy. Uh, Adam Rogers, when he was interning, always contributed. I don't know. We just got out of, uh, we just got out of having the person behind the glass contributing. And now we're back to that. Uh, coming up on the program tomorrow, I do believe it's going to be John Mercer. We'll also look back at Marshall's matchup tonight with Middle Tennessee. Look ahead to Marshall taking on Charlotte on the men's side. We'll have the show as we normally do, 5.06 right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Also, following the show, we're going to have College Basketball Today, where we will take a completely serious look at the Thundering Herd and the matchup with Charlotte. Honestly, I'm telling you, you tune in, it's completely two different shows. You tune into this show, it's it's fun, that's the mandate, try to have fun. You tune into that show, it's it's like a business trip for me. I don't know what it is. I just It's just a flip of a switch and I'm completely different. So that's coming up tomorrow. Thanks to my intern, Nick Verzellini, standout, representing Marshall University. What if we got interns from, like, say, Ohio University Southern Campus? OU. What if we get some OU interns in here? You think, you think that that would be the end of the show for me? There'd be a, I don't know. We'll find out. I'm going to inquire about that. Good night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.